Miracle Monday. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, Jesus is one day closer to coming back than he was yesterday. He's one minute closer, maybe even two minutes closer to coming back than he was a minute ago. <laughs> Praise God. Hello, Stephanie. God bless you. Um, boy, that's rough down there in Texas. God bless them. You know, um, I spent a lot of time with the Baptist people, and um, it was first Sunday of the month, so it may 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 have been Communion Sunday for them. I don't know, but uh, you know, here at Communion Fire, we take we take the uh, the difficulties of the church very seriously, no matter what part of the body of Christ it involves. You know, it was the Coptics brothers, Coptic brothers who were had their heads lopped off in uh, um, Libya uh, on the shores of uh, Tripoli. And, um, you know, it was uh, the terrorists of ISIS that were, you know, lopping off the heads of children and teenagers and women and men in Mosul and ISIS. And um, then we've seen the terrorism all around the world, you know, that is almost getting to where it's becoming such a daily event that there's a tendency for us to leather up our hearts and become hardened to it. Oh, it's just more killings in the news. Well, that's just not how it is, folks. Praise God. So, um, we heard an evangelist talking about this, uh, responding to it. And, you know, he talked about Jesus dying on the cross and how God gave his only begotten son so that we would have eternal life. And Jesus says, greater love has no man than this, and he lays down his life for his friends. So Camille and I were talking in communion this morning about the, the verity or the truth or the values that are involved in our perspective and how we explain to a non-believing or unbelieving world um, why these things happen. Because, you know, we heard it right away on the news, you know, that uh, after the event happened, that uh, why does God allow these things? Well, um, I asked Camille, well, this, this one brother said, well, it's because, you know, um, you know, Jesus died for us and, you know, there's, there's not any perfection until Jesus comes back. And, uh, you know, kind of explaining it away, at least that's what it felt like. And um, uh, you would know who this is because he's, you know, he's a regular part of uh, the news media these days. And. Um, but the thing is, I, I think there may be more thoughtful, prayerful answers or responses, whether it's, whether it's a, uh, a restaurant in France or whether it's, a, um, you know, um, something that takes place in the streets of London um, and New York, uh, you know, just recently. You know, understanding terrorism, understanding violence, understanding hatred, understanding rebellion in these days. Um, I think it was President Trump said, these are dark days. These are dark days. And, and he's right. We're living, even though the sun is out and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, we've got terrific blue skies and we're looking for the coming of Jesus. And, um, you know, things, things are happening at quite a pace, aren't they? And... Um, Stephanie, can you send me a quick note and tell me if you can see or hear this broadcast? Because we had problems yesterday. It says we've been live for four minutes. I just want to make sure that uh, the signal's coming across. Um, so in any event, um, how do we deal with that? How do we respond to these events as Christians? You know, what, what is the Christian response? So I, I asked Camille what her thoughts were. I said, if you were asked that question, how would you answer it, you know? Why do bad things happen to good people? Well, you know, uh, her response is, you know, that um, none of us are good. We're, you know, we're, we're all made righteous by the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that grace um, is sufficient for us. But she said, uh, we live in an evil world, and we do. We live in an evil world, and as long as there are the unredeemed, as long as there are those who do not believe, 
uh, then Camille's pretty right. You know, we, we live in an evil world. There's darkness, there's uh, sickness, there's increasing mental uh, derangement. There's, um, uh, I mean, terrorism is just demonic anyway. It's just deranged. Anybody who participates in terrorism is participating with darkness, with hatred, with variance, with emulation, strife, warfare, um, evil, rebellion, haters of God, haters of parents, haters of, of country. You know, it, it's all done out of a, you know, uh, uh, dear Joy Dawson used to say, the insanity of sin, when we live a sinful life. And so Camille then uh, asked me, what would your response be? And I had to say, you know, I'm really struggling with that. I'm trying to figure out how do we respond to a world that's being infected by such terrorist acts, whether it's somebody who is part of an organization, anarchy, uh, rebellion, hatred, um, fake news, uh, or even attacking Christians because they just don't like them. You know, uh, really, that's insane. The insanity is I said, you know, honey, I, I think where I'm leaning toward is understanding that these things happen because um, God's mercy is new every morning to the whole earth. Every single man, woman, and child, that God's mercy is new every morning. And if you choose not to believe, then you become a victim and you create victimization of those others who may believe in God's mercy. And uh, the, you know, the devil is not, uh, is, is only targeting anywhere he can to try and mock God. And, um, you know, there's no greater mockery than to go into an 11 o'clock church service in the middle of, you know, 20 miles outside of uh, San Antonio you know, with uh, guns as a veteran that, you know, was dishonorably discharged and just shoot a whole family of eight. You were all killed. To shoot the pastor's daughter and kill her. Uh, to shoot a two-year-old that uh, is, you know, fighting fighting for her little life. And, uh, the, you know, understanding the, the insanity, the craziness of that kind of effect when, you know, it's a church building that holds maybe 100 people. And over half of them are either killed or end up in a hospital. What is that about? Evil um, will continue to demonstrate itself in Iraq, you know, um, erroneous, uh, what was it called, random ways, you know, and um, the error of sin um, leads to death. And that's that's part of the gospel is that, you know, when we have communion, we show the Lord's death until he comes, you know, and his death is our trust, is our mercy, you know, it's where we taste his mercy. And then, then we have what Camille calls the holiness of forgiveness, or forgiveness that brings about that holiness, that we're not common anymore. We become children of God. And in many cases, the devil's target are those who love the Lord or love peace or seek peace and pursue it, or those who love to love others and help others and do acts of mercy, whether they're believers or not. They believe in love. They believe in those things that are heavenly, those things that are upward, those things that are above, that are lovely, true, just, honest, a good report. If there's any virtue, if there's any praise, we think on those things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, so, uh, you know, um, we all struggle to explain these things and I would love for you to share with us, you know, you can share it on the, on the feedback screen there. Um, but if somebody asked you the question, why do these things happen? Why do good things happen to bad people? Why do bad things happen to good people? You know, I mean, it, it really has nothing to do with good or bad or, or good and evil, does it? Because good and evil is the fruit that Adam and Eve ate in the garden. And when they did that, they brought death upon themselves because the law demands that, uh, uh, that we are righteous before God. And um, if we are not righteous before God, then we're sinful. And sin demands death. Sin is a death penalty. 
And if we don't die to ourselves by believing in Christ, so we can say it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me, then we're subject to the forces of this world and all of its fallen condition and all the evilness that Camille was talking about. We live in an evil world, you know, and um, whether it's drugs or, or uh, drinking or uh, whether it's uh, opioid abuse, whether it is um, living selfishly or being so religious that you judge others. I love no man. I, I judge no man but to love him. I love you. I love you where you are, as you are, for who you are. I don't care what your condition is, what your situation is. I love you. God loves you. That's two. That's two people who love you. Whether I can see you or not, I know that God's love is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost, and that Holy Ghost shares that love with you. He pours it out upon you just by, you know, a fresh start every day. Praise God. Fresh start. Fresh start. And so we wake up today with a beautiful blue sky, the sun shining in the sky. And uh, we have a grieving population in um, Midland, Texas, you know, right near San Antonio. And uh, thank God we, you know, we had a friend down there for a wedding. She was only 20 miles away from the shooting. Thank you, Lord, for protecting Ruthie. Praise God. You know, and I've got friends in um, Flower Mound, Texas, and we praise God that, you know, uh, but these things happen, you know, bad things happen because this world, even though Jesus has won the total victory, he's already won the warfare. When he said it is finished, it was. So if you believe, you have eternal life. That's what we need to carry into, the, into, the, into our day-to-day -day life. And then we need to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit and trust the Lord for his protection. Camille said, I don't think we started praying the prayer of St. Michael until you had your open heart surgery, Bob. <laughs> so hello, Dan. Good to see you, sir. God bless you. God bless your day. Much success this week. Great prosperity. And uh, may the Lord give you a crown of life for doing, um, for doing your profession with uh, elegance and with ethics and for being a man of God in the vocation that you have. God bless you. God bless you, Dan. Praise God. Uh, Stephanie, same for you. I don't know what your uh, vocation is or, uh, you know, what, what your lifestyle is. But the thing is that, that God wants to bless you where you are, as you are, for who you are. Just believe. Just believe. And then he brings it about through communion. He makes it personal, intimate, and one-on-one. -on -one. The bread opens our eyes to see his face. And one glimpse of his face can change your life forever. And we sip this wine of his blood. And when we drink his, uh, uh, when we drink uh, the wine of his blood, then we drink into ourselves his love. And his love permeates every cell, works its way into every fiber of our being. And when that love goes in, it quickens us. Love conquers all, it conquers all your Chaos, it conquers all of your depression, conquers all of your misunderstandings, can conquer any addiction that you have, can conquer any kind of problem that you have, can, can, can heal any relationship that's broken, can bring about uh, God's end in the matter. And the thing is that we are called to douse ourselves in the Holy Spirit and to have the Holy Spirit douse our interior life, you know, with the love and the light and the, and the life of heaven by Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we ask you to bless this bread to be your body. We do this to remember you. The body of Jesus broken for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, I just have a sense to pray for Atlanta today and for Georgia. And Lord, we pray for Atlanta. We pray for Georgia today. We pray for whatever's going on there in the scope of heaven, that you would, um, that you would bring about your divine provision of protection, that you would bring about your divine guardianship, 
within each individual's heart and mind by the peace of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to bless this wine to be your blood. We do this to remember you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Hallelujah. I'm not laughing in terms of um, uh, I'm laughing in joy because um, in the wine I heard uh, swing low sweet cherry coming for to carry me home swing low sweet cherry coming for to carry me home. And then you get the hand clap and I look to the Jordan and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels looking after me. Coming for to carry me home. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that your blessing, your peace, the illustration of your love in our life would be so manifest that we couldn't deny it each step of our day each way of our day each each time we pray in our day that we would recognize those little symbols of the holy spirit of eternal life of the body and blood of jesus christ of the power that comes with the angelic presence that you send forth on the earth as our guardians, as our helpers, as our uh, partners with the Holy Spirit uh, to fulfill the prayers that are going on about your throne today with Mary and all the saints. And we thank you and praise you for the intercession of heaven. May the course of our heart join with you this day, Lord God, to be part of that eternal prayer meeting that's going on 24-7 until you return. Lord, we pray with you, not just to you. We ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts. Show us how to pray today. Lead us in the way of prayer. Lead us in the way of life. Lead us into the depths of your love that we might become a blessing of your anointing upon the lives of others and that that anointing might go forth to break the bonds to set the captive free in Jesus' name. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is Bob Bonnell for Communion Fire saying, Be bold, believe. Hallelujah. We'll see you tomorrow. Reminder that Friday, Lloyd Marcus will be coming on to give us part two of his incredible story. All right, God bless your day. Uh, get the week started right. You know, put some pep in your step. Don't just walk into life. Do it with a little pep. Hallelujah. Passion passion goes a long way, doesn't it, Dan? It's the sizzle that sells, isn't it? Praise God. You know, you bring life to people. They want to work with you. Praise God. All right. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.